hunted. Happy Halloween, everyone, from the Bald Library. Hunted. They whirl above me, riding the skies on the wings of bats with blazing fiery tails. They come down and steal one after another of us, swooping down and snatching men or women by hand or foot, scooping them into their clutches and away into the darkness. They are not even alone. Things seem to lurk in every shadow, taking those who attempt to hide from the flocks above. They are hunting us. They call us like we are cattle. And they... They are laughing at us. Xenos. They hate us so. What did we do? Why? What hell is this that opens its gates and lets them walk amongst us? Where is he? Where is our God now? For all my life I have given praise unto him. When my mother died, I did not mourn her. I was too busy in my duties. The lighting of the candles the litanies recited while I burned through my years, cleaning, tidying, bowing and scraping. I served, for I believed the ancient prayer. The Emperor protects. Why hast thou forsaken me now? I break away from the crowds, charging down the corridors and walkways of the hive. I avoid the shadows and keep to the light. Yet, in my travels I find a door, a jar, a warm fire within, a hidey hole they might not have found might not investigate. There are so many of my people running, so many victims for the horrors to sup upon, to play with. The entire hive stretched out before them like a banquet. I sneak inside, aware that even my own kind might be as terrible a danger as these darkling beings. If I were to reveal the hiding place of another, why would they not take my life to protect their own? When I pad inside, the room is empty. All that remains here is a half-consumed meal, a dying fire in the hearth. Whoever was here either ventured out when the klaxons went off or has already been taken by these things. I close the door quietly but firmly. I breathe out only when I hear the latch close within the frame. I have no doubt the enemy could make bits of the door, could find me if they so chose. But there are so many playthings for them to feast on first. First. Even my own mind knows the truth of the matter. I am not safe. I will never be safe again. They will take us all eventually. Do they intend to eat us? or merely revel in our slaying. I close my eyes as I weep. I do not know. Perhaps I should take the blunt knife from the table and somehow end my own misery. Swifter, safer. I do not know what these Xenos are doing to us. But the Emperor despises the weak. He would never forgive me for taking that which he gave me. Never. So, I must endure. I must hide. Maybe they will pass me by. Maybe they will get bored. Unlikely. My eyes flash open as I twist and look around me. There is no one there. They are getting closer, states the disembodied voice. I can barely breathe. My heart plays out a drumbeat I feel can be heard for hab blocks away. I shut my eyes tight and wrap my fingers together in a supplication as I stumble over litanies and psalms. The words blend together and become nothing more than gibbering as I hear the voice again. He will not hear you. He will not intervene. But I hear you. 
I know what this is, sent to tempt me, the enemy. My words stop, my head comes up. I am not alone, despite that I fear for my soul. The voice somehow comforts me. How? I cannot understand. I speak more calmly, shedding words into an empty room. The demon? And there was me thinking you were meant to be defective. Save me. No. I have nothing to gain from it. I cannot understand. I am speaking with a devil. Yet my fear remains most pungent for those outside this room. Could they be worse than a devil? Perhaps. What do you want? I say to the emptiness. Entertainment. But you will not play with me. You cannot pay the fee. I hear one of the bat-winged things swoop above this hovel. I hear its fire. I panic. What do you trade in, demon? You know. Everyone knows. Panic building, as though the Xenos can hear it speak with me. I now rage. Why so coy? Say it, demon. I cannot. All who come to me must do so willingly. There are rules, even for one as mighty as I. Especially for one who can grant heart's desires. Chills. I do not know which are stronger. The ones that flood my mind and slash down my spine, raising every hair on my head, my back, my arms. Yet the fear of the Xenos is real, more palpable. It comes from my stomach, irradiates from within me, making my teeth chatter, my bones chill. I take deep breaths, attempting to calm myself. My teeth stop at the least. I control myself as best I can as I attempt to show a slither of courage in the face of the impossible, that a demon of legend comes to bargain with me. Now of all nights, but of course, it would be now, when I have nothing to lose but my life. I know what you want. I know what I want. And I also know your sort. You must be a gambler extraordinaire to become so mighty amongst the lords of chaos. It laughs. <laughs> Say on, mortal. You intrigue me. I would have you make a deal with me. Yet, if I would wager something so important... I expect the chance to regain what I gave you for a time. I do not loan people power, little mortal. See it as a challenge. Can you outwit me? It laughs again. <laughs> a wager I will take. Speak a pact of your own devising. First must be the prize you want. Then the details. Then the payment I will receive. Speak the rules into existence. And if you speak true, our pact will be made. As simple as that. The world blinds you to the truth. Your beliefs blind you from true reality. In matters of the soul, little mortal, things are always simple. Speak your doom into existence. Speak the pact. For an instant I demure. I shiver again, but I hear them outside. They are coming closer. 
More of the bat things swing over this place with each passing minute. They will find me. They are coming for me. I breathe in deep. I steady myself. I attempt to hide the fear from my voice. And I begin. I wish to leave this place and be taken to somewhere that nobody else can harm me. I will then live, and you, demon, will give me the chance to earn back that which I gave you in payment for the salvation. A test of your devising, but one within my capacity to perform. This test will not rest on knowledge, skill, or ability that I do not already possess. And if you do this for me, I cannot believe what I am about to say. I bite my lip to steady myself again. The taste of iron is my own blood. Yet I recall how it flooded from those taken by the Xenos, so it rained down from above. I breathe in deeply and in tone. If you do this for me, I will pay you with my eternal soul. <laughs> The entity laughs, but as it does, the world becomes thinner around me. Like all colour and light is being washed away, everything becoming dimmer. I am nowhere. I can see and feel nothing. I have the sensation of movement, but no input from skin or hair or eyesight that proves this to be the case. My eyes shut. But when they flicker open again, I am surrounded in a fiery light. I look behind me, around me. I am stood in an open corridor with torches of wood blazing. I can see it is curved, yet at an angle so slight that it proves this place is huge. I am overwhelmed. I begin to laugh, and I cannot stop. I can hear myself, of course. The fear now gone, making it maniacal and almost unhinged. I have lost everything and everyone I ever knew. But I am alive. I have survived. Then... The voice returns. Now it is time to pay your dues, little mortal. What of our pact? I cannot break it, even if I wish so. You are safe now. Somewhere nobody else can harm you. And what of the deal, the test? so that I might regain that which I paid to you. Our wager. Ah, that is so deliciously simple. Even you can fathom it. The test is this. Catch yourself. If you can do this, I will immediately free you and send you on your way, so returned, body intact. And, as I am a fair being, a just being, I shall even give you the opportunity to switch places every now and again. But if I know that all I need do is catch myself, then why would I run any more? <laughs> <laughs> Why indeed? Farewell, mortal. As his derision echoes around the corridor, I see at its furthest end what can only be me. I walk towards myself. But my copy now looks at me with horror, as if I were an apparition from the pit itself. 
and he flees. I give chase, sprinting as fast as I can, but never making the distance between us contract even by a hair. He is me, and I am him. We are equally fast. I presume that my ire, my desperation, would give me the edge, yet I cannot understand this, for I run as if being chased by all the hounds of hell. And on, and on it goes. I lose all wind, I stop, and so does he, eyeing me warily over the distance. I regain energy and pretend to slump against the wall. Then, without warning, I sprint at him again, not running, but putting in my oar. I pick it so fast that my legs ache, my lungs burn. I run and I run and I run, yet I cannot catch him. And on and on it goes. I now have to wipe the hair from my eyes as I chase after him, me, him. And on and on it goes. Nights and days are indistinguishable when you are underground. The torches, though made of sticks, never seem to burn down. Whenever I am exhausted, I stop and rest, sometimes even sleeping, forever hoping to rise in time to catch him unawares. Yet, when I wake, so does he. And off we go again, running, 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 and on and on it goes. Then one day, or is it night, beyond all fatigue and despair, I shout as I run. Demon, you promised me a chance. You stated I could switch. And there, after all this time, the rumble of laughter erupts again into my mind. I am surprised you held out this long, little mortal. I am a just being, so this I shall now do. Sleep again, mortal, and when you awake, your positions shall be switched as I had promised. I slow and stop, then fold in on myself and smile. Now is my chance. When I awake, then I shall walk to myself and be caught. And by doing so, I shall be freed. I awake. Cold ground beneath my body fires on walls, lighting an ever-extending corridor. I rise, standing tall. My body aches, so I stretch. Yet when my arms come down, my eyes open wide, and I look both directions to be sure. And there, in the distance, a heap of hair and sinew wakes some two hundred paces away. And something tells me I should walk towards it, try to help it if I can. The urge is so strong. But, as it now lurches up and runs, closing the ground between us, it charges at me. Deranged triumphant laughter echoes from it. It is emaciated, all hair and bones, no flesh to speak of. It gets closer and closer, and I see its grinning face. Behind a huge long curtain of bedraggled hair, a skull with paper stretched across it, teeth drawn back as if it had never eaten before, yet retained the properties of a killer. And there, its eyes, empty of any reason, remorse, or sanity. Its orbs now reflect a desperation, that knows no depths, a hunger I could never fill, nothing could. I feel I should still wait for it, but I cannot. It is appalling, its fingernails so long like talons, its hair so matted, as if it has dwelt here for decades. But its eyes... 
I cannot help myself. I know I should stop. I should not do this. But I cannot help myself. I start to slowly walk backwards, shrinking from it. It now howls in consternation, a bellow so pitiful. It is as if all of the pain of the universe were scratching away at its innards, released through its throat in one preternatural howl. And I run. It charges after me, now screaming insanely, anger replacing woe, and I cannot help but double my pace to sprint off as if my life depended on it. For surely it did. And with each pace, I can see the distance between us lengthen, and the howl from the monster becoming ever more frustrated. And I run on, and on, and on. Ha 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 